purify my heart. Let me be as gold and precious silver. Purify my heart. Let me be as gold. Is to be holy, set apart for You, Lord. I choose to be holy, set apart for You, my Master. Ready to. guys, Pastor Chad again from Mohican Church. Glad you could join me. Today uh, we're going to be getting back into Colossians chapter 3, uh, 12 through 14. Going to be continuing to talk about the attitude check. Uh, the attitude check and considering what we're wearing. Okay, and so before we get into that text again, will you join me as we pray? Oh Father God, we thank you so much for this opportunity. Yeah, the opportunity, Lord, to to maybe gather together, the opportunity to specifically, though, hear your word, to open it up and to, to listen to what it is that you have for us. I thank you that your word is living and active. I thank you that it, it never loses its relevance. And so, Lord, we just open it up today and we kneel before you with it in front of us. And we anticipate you doing something in us. We do ask, Lord, that you would break our hearts for what breaks yours. That you would reveal to us, Father, what it is that is not good and pleasing in your sight in us. And so, um, so Lord, we look to you. And I pray, Father, that even now, Lord, the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. 
And so here we are. I pray your blessing upon us, um, upon my friends. And, uh, and again, Lord, we just look to you to do your work in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So Colossians chapter 3. <clears throat> I will read again verses 12 through 14. The Apostle Paul writing says this, Therefore, as, cho as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other, and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Praise the Lord for His Word. Amen. So last week we looked at just the very uh, beginning of that passage right there. We covered just a handful of words. Um, and we're not even going to be all the way through it because I don't feel like it is good to blow through it. I believe that the last part of this needs its very own sermon uh, and to be addressed. And so that's coming next week. But we saw last week that that the Apostle Paul is saying, clothe yourselves with these things. He's addressing believers. He's addressing those who are in Christ, those who have come to him in faith, you know, saved by grace alone, through faith alone, and Christ alone. We've come to Jesus and surrendered to him by faith. And he says, so because of that, clothe yourselves with these things. He's not saying do these good things so that you can earn God's favor. Do these things so that you can attain salvation. No, he's saying, because of that, do this. Because of that, put on these things. And so because we are in Christ, we've been given a new wardrobe of characteristics, a new wardrobe of attitudes. And so Paul says, put them on. Put them on. Have you ever had, maybe when you were growing up, you ever have your mom or your dad see what you were wearing and, and be astonished? They, they're shocked. You know, they, they may, may say, what are you wearing? I paid good money so that you could have a closet full of clothes and not look like some wretched kid that crawled out of the gutter somewhere. You, get, I, you I paid good money so you didn't walk around with holes in your jeans or grass stain all over the place. I mean, I know today we pay, not we, because I don't, some people pay good money for jeans with holes in them. But they see you coming out and they say, what are you wearing? You're not going out like that. You're not going to go in public like that and people know that you're my kid. And so go in there and put on clothes that represent me. Put on clothes that are appropriate for you in public. And so the Apostle Paul is, is essentially saying, put on these things, guys. Listen, you're doing life together and you need to put these on. They don't happen by accident. Our new nature is being changed and transformed, but we need to be intentional about cultivating that and putting these very things on that he says. And so last week we talked about the, those two things, compassion, three things, compassion, kindness, and humility that we must put on as believers. That must mark the way that we treat people. That must mark the way that we interact with each other, compassionately, kindly, Humbly. Are you putting those on? And so he continues on then in that very passage without even skipping, uh, without even putting a period in there. He says, put these things on. By the way, let me just paint this picture for you here. You know, as we come to faith in Jesus Christ, um, remember, we are positionally clothed in Jesus Christ's righteousness. We are positionally clothed in His goodness, meaning that we are we are justified, we are declared righteous by God. And so, so as that happens, He takes Jesus Christ takes all of our filth, all of our nastiness, and then and we are uh, re we have received, we have been put on Christ's righteousness in the eyes of God. And so positionally, we are clothed in Christ's righteousness. Because of that, Paul is saying, we will be progressively clothed in these things. Progressively, as in, as we journey on, as we continue to follow Christ and seek Him. 
we will be clothed with these things. So in essence, the righteousness of Christ will, will begin to come out of us in the way that we act toward one another. And so, Paul says to put on compassion, put on kindness, put on humility, and also put on gentleness. Put on gentleness or, or meekness. We see that uh, gentleness is actually a fruit of the Spirit. Well, part of the fruit of the Spirit. We see the fruit of the Spirit listed in Galatians chapter 5 in verses 22 and 23. Gentleness is listed there. So, in other words, it is going to be one of those things that is grown on the branches of our lives when we come to faith in Jesus. It's going to be genuinely worked out in us so that others can see it. Galatians 6.1 also says that gentleness is necessary when we are going to restore a brother or a sister who is caught in a sin. It's not painting the picture of gentleness as avoiding that conflict or conversation. But gentleness has to be the way that we approach that brother or that sister who is caught in sin. Matthew 5.5, 5, uh, the Sermon of the Mount. On the Mount, Jesus commends those who are meek, who are gentle. He, he calls them blessed. Or fully satisfied are those who are meek, those who are gentle. 1 Peter 3.15 says this, that gentleness is necessary, this is a summary, gentleness is necessary when we are telling others of the hope that we have in us. You know, because they're going to see the way that we are and the hope that we have, they're going to ask about it. And it says that we need to tell them about the hope we have in Jesus with gentleness. And so gentleness, uh, what is this gentleness? And as a matter of fact, if if you're a lady, that term probably sounds uh, good to you, welcoming to you. And it tends to, for us guys, gentleness kind of sounds like one of those things that might describe a lady, but not a man. I know, that sounds stereotypical. But I think a lot of times it's true. Guys will hear the word gentle, and we will tend to think weak. We might even tend to think, as we're talking about the putting on of clothes, gentleness, isn't that like a, a, a women's outfit? Listen, we, we must understand that gentleness is not weakness. Gentleness is not being timid. Gentleness is really power under control. Power under control. And so I think to help us understand, to get a little bit of a picture about that, I want you to think of this. I want you to think of a, uh, let's say a pit bull. Think of a pit bull, and, and I want you to think of just the power of the jaws. The power that a pit bull has in his jaws. I mean, it's a stout dog, right? And then I want you to think about those powerful jaws of a pit bull picking up one of its puppies to move it. The same jaws that could crush a foe they are used with gentleness on one of the puppies. Not to crush it, but with just enough pressure to move it unharmed to where it needs to go. Or of a lion. Now, thankfully, I've never been bitten by either, but, but I know that the jaw strength of a lion is pretty big too. It's pretty, pretty important and pretty massive. And, and you think about the jaw strength of a lion and the teeth and what it could do. And then think about it picking up one of the cubs gently and moving it. Now, neither one of those animals is weak. Neither one of them is timid. But they both will use gentleness in context. They will use gentleness, that power under control, when they are approaching one of the young ones, when they're approaching one of the weak ones. And so... We need to understand that gentleness is not weakness, but it's power under control. Gentleness also is a willingness to suffer injury rather than to inflict it. Gentleness is a willingness to suffer the injury rather than to inflict it. And we're told to put on gentleness. I want you to think about the game operation. Maybe you have no idea what I'm talking about. Because I don't even know if it's made anymore today. 
but the game operation years ago anyway uh you know it was a game board i guess that's what i'll call it had a picture of a guy on there who had a light bulb for a nose and there were different slots all through the game board all through his body and and inside those were the little items that you had to get out now every one of those slots was lined in metal i mean there was a metal sheet underneath all of it but the edges of all those slots was exposed metal and you had to use these tweezers that were also metal to reach in those little slots and get out those items right without touching the sides because if you touch the sides what happened his nose would light up and you knew you lost you lost your turn you didn't get it out of there now to do that game you don't just approach that like with your sleeves rolled up and, like i'm gonna get this done and you just go in there like a bowl in a china shop you can't do that you have to approach it with gentleness you have to approach it no matter the the amount of bulk that you have the amount of the the size of your biceps or whatever else you you had to approach it with gentleness, precision. Think about this. Think about um, you are with a buddy or maybe one of your kids or whatever, and you're in the yard and you are playing catch with a raw egg. With a raw egg. Now, I know you want to really trust the person you're playing catch with. The point is not to see how far you can launch that egg or, or how quickly you can crack it on your teammate. The point is to see how gently you can catch that egg without it breaking. You don't want the egg to break. Because if, if there's, a, whole, uh, if there's a, a bunch of teams, if you're competing against someone, the, the person who breaks the egg first loses. And the one who keeps that egg unbroken the longest wins. And so what you are doing is, as, as you go... As you go to catch the egg, as your partner throws it, you are going to cradle that thing, and you're going to bring it in like this. Okay, You're going to move with it. It's not about how, how strongly you can just attack that thing and tuck it like a football, but you are, you're bringing it in. You are, you are gently bringing that thing down into your hands. That is gentleness. This is the way that we need to be approaching each other. We need to be reacting to one another. Gentleness. This power under control. This willingness to, to suffer injury rather than to afflict it. Have you been putting on gentleness? Have you been treating people with gentleness? It's also helpful to think about this. People are dealing with all kinds of stuff, just like you are, and it's extremely helpful, relationally, to approach them with gentleness. Not tiptoeing, not what I mean, not tiptoeing, not being timid, but, but gentleness, the way that you approach them, the, the desiring to suffer injury rather than sustain, than inflict it. I tell my kids different times, gentleness isn't, uh, it isn't as much what we say as much as how we say it. Listen, because I can say something that is totally true, otherwise absolutely right, but I can say it in a harsh way, and that, that immediately makes it wrong. I can, I can send a text to someone that is totally true and otherwise benign, but I can send it you know what I mean, too. I can send it uh, very short. And perhaps sometimes we do that because we're passive-aggressive. But I can send it shortly, or I can, I can send it gently. And you know what I mean. <laughs> you know what I mean if you send texts or receive them at all. It's not as much what we say, but it is how we say it. It's how we approach and how we handle it. It's how we receive that egg, how we treat it, not how, not just making contact with our hands. Okay? And gentleness isn't, um, it's not avoiding hard topics. Like I said before, it's not avoiding, correcting, an erring brother or sister. But what it is, what gentleness does look like is, is doing that thing, but doing it with tears in our eyes. With genuine concern 
for that individual. Not wanting to harm them, but wanting to correct the situation and resolve the situation. Gentleness. Paul says, be gentle. Put it on. He also says, put on patience. Put on patience, bearing with one another, as he goes on in that text. We also know that patience is a part of the fruit of the Spirit, also, just like gentleness. You see that also in Galatians chapter 5, 22 and 23. 2 Peter 3, 9 and 15, Peter says that the Lord is patient. And oh my goodness, are you thankful that the Lord is patient? He says in that text that the Lord's patience actually... Um, actually leads to people coming to Him in repentance. The Lord is patient. He is not slow. He is not late in returning and bringing judgment. It's His patience wanting people to come to repentance. And I'm so thankful for that. Paul said, as he wrote to Timothy in 1 Timothy 1, Paul speaks of the Lord's patience too. In this text, um, I just want to read this for you. 1 Timothy 1, 15 and 16, Paul said this, listen, here's a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his unlimited patience as an example for those who would believe on him and receive eternal life. Paul says, I'm the worst of all sinners. And, and his patience was on display in me so that others would see it. <laughs> I'm so very thankful that, that the Lord is patient with me. And, and the Apostle Paul tells us to put on patience. It is, after all, part of the fruit of the Spirit. Patience, bearing with. Hey, has your patience ever been tested by somebody? <laughs> I'm telling you, as we, as we continue to clothe ourselves with compassion and kindness, with humility and gentleness in relation to our brothers and sisters, I promise you that it's not going to be long before we realize that patience is a necessity if we're going to keep living that way. Why is patience a necessity if we're going to keep living that way with our brothers and sisters? Well, frankly, because people can be difficult, can't they? People can be difficult, and so we need patience. We have to bear with people, the Scripture says. Listen, patience is bearing with difficult people or situations while still maintaining your composure. Hmm. How's that been going? How's that been going? While still maintaining your composure. Listen, that's, that's whether or not anybody else is in the room. Or whether or not anybody else is in the car with you. How do you react when somebody cuts you off? When somebody cuts you off and then starts driving real slow and you can't pass. <laughs> not that I've experienced that. Bearing with people, and situations while still maintaining our composure. Oh my goodness. Enduring. Paul says put on patience. Bearing with. I mean, that looks like being slow to anger. Chilling out. The Apostle Paul says put it on. Get it out of your closet and put it on. But how in the world... Do we do that? Because people sometimes, really, they can just be knuckleheads. But we have to be patient with them. How in the world do we do that? Well, I think it does help to remember that God is still in control. Okay, God is still in control. And, and frankly, remember that He has been and continues to be so patient with you and so patient with me. And perhaps it would be a really good thing to practice as a knee-jerk reaction when someone irritates us to no end. Is to immediately remember the patience that the Lord 
has had with you. It's also helpful to remember the fact that people just aren't finished growing and maturing yet. People just are not finished growing and maturing. The Lord is still working on them. He is still, he is still causing them to... Same with you. Listen, the same with you. He is, he is making us more and more like Jesus Christ. And He's not done with them either. He ain't done with me. And He's not done with them. Just listen, picture a toddler. Now maybe the ones that maybe they're the ones that are trying your patience. But picture a toddler. We know that they're not fully developed. Therefore, we don't, we aren't necessarily surprised when they do some of the things that they do. Now I'm not saying to call people childish, but I'm just saying to remember that, that he's not done working on them yet. And perhaps he's using us to help mature them. Perhaps he's using them to help mature us. Either way, we need to extend patience and we need to bear with them. And, of course, it's still helpful to know that we're growing too. I'm, I'm, I ain't perfect. Neither are you. Remember, we are still growing too. And, and, and it's probably good to remember that you are likely trying someone else's patience. <laughs> okay? Now, I know if you're sitting with somebody right now, they might be able to say, yeah, I'm that one. Okay? You're likely trying someone else's patience as you continue to mature and to grow. But, but we're told to put on gentleness. Put on patience and bear with one another. Now listen, you might be saying right now, your response to me, your response to hearing this might be, I'm just not a gentle or a patient person. Listen, you don't understand that, that you know, maybe you're going to say, hey, I'm, uh, I'm Italian or I'm whatever, I'm Irish. or I, You pick the nationality. <laughs> I've heard people say all kinds of stuff. I'm just not that way. If you would just know my mom, my mom or my grandma, you know, they weren't patient. They weren't. They weren't gentle, and, and it's become kind of like this, um, this thing we laugh about. Oh, it's just how we are. Listen, you might be saying that you're not a gentle, you're not a patient person, but I'm telling you that if you are Christ, if you are in Christ and you have been made new in Him, you need to be. And if you're not, I mean, frankly, we need to change. It's not okay to continue on without putting these things on. As a believer in Jesus Christ, we have to change. We've got to change the clothes. We've got to take off that stuff and put on what we have been given. The Lord has made provision for us. He's given access, uh, given us access to a brand new change of clothes, to clean appropriate clothes that don't have holes in the knees, that aren't all scuffed up, that represent Him well. And that's exactly what we're doing. And so we are told, my friends, to put these things on. And so my question to you really is, what are you wearing? Look in the mirror. Look in the mirror. Here's the mirror. Look in the mirror. What are you wearing? Hey, join me as we pray. Father God, I'm so thankful for your word to us. I'm so thankful for, Father, your word when it brings encouragement, your word when it brings correcting, your word when it just shines the light into our very heart and our very being. And I'm so thankful, Lord, that you have given us your love and your grace in Jesus Christ. And I'm so thankful that you've given us the ability to cry out to you for salvation. And once we do, Lord, you've given us the ability, the strength by the indwelling Holy Spirit to put these things on. And so, Lord, in our reaction, in our interaction with other people, with our brothers and sisters, help us to do just that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your, your leading, your teaching, 
your grace and your mercy, your patience, your gentleness with us. Help us to look more like you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, hey, I love you guys. Thank you for joining me in the Word. I hope that stepped on your toes just as much as it did mine. Let's look in the mirror and check our clothes, all right? Until next time, love you guys. God bless. We. Mm -hmm.